All right, so the first thing you want to do is you can go ahead and t have all three of your routers lined up very close to each other. I have one router, which is this middle one plugged in. Um, the light right now on it is red, as you can see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and connect my cell phone to the wireless network for this device. Let's see what that looks like. All right, folks, so now that we're in my Wi-Fi settings, as you can see, the very top network is the Nova 9CE8 device. You're going to want to go ahead and accept or click on that device. And then you want to enter the password on the bottom of your um, mesh router. So each one of your mesh routers is going to have the exact same SSID, which is your Wi-Fi name. And it's going to have the exact same password. So go ahead and enter the password that's on the back of the device. For example, mine is Queen9546. Go ahead and enter that, just like so. And now it's connected. As you can see, it says no data connection under the Nova 9CE name, or 9CE8 name. Um, but we're gonna fix that here shortly. All right, folks. So as you can see, I went ahead and plugged the ethernet adapter um, into, or ethernet cord into the ethernet port um, on the router. It's gonna be the one with the little blue globe right under the port, which is the one that's on the right side nearest your power adapter. Um, make sure you do not plug it into this one, um, the one with the two arrows going either direction. This is the one that you'll use to plug in any other peripheral or, or device like uh, Xbox or your PC. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this bad boy over. So as you can see, the light is still red, but I'll show you how to rectify that and get yourself a blue or green solid light. All right, folks, once you launch the app, there will be a uh, agreement you have to agree to. So go ahead and hit agree. Um, and then the next screen should be this screen. Go ahead and hit setup. It'll automatically um, figure out what type of internet you have. So this is, or internet connection. So this is gonna put me on the dynamic IP. I can either hit next or I can choose it manually. I'm gonna go ahead and hit, um, choose manual just like, just in case you already know what you need you can kind of see what the options are you have PPPoE you have DHCP and then a static IP address I'm gonna go ahead and go with the recommended one hit next it's gonna ask for your device's location I'm gonna go ahead and hit while using this app here you're gonna want to go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi name and password so for the sake of this video I'm gonna go ahead and create one let's just say it's fish and cheese and then the password is going to be fish 32 well it's got to be a little bit longer than that so let's say fish and cheese all right so it's gonna be fish and cheese fish and cheese Hit okay all right once it's done you'll see it says saved please reconnect you'll get some um this error that keeps coming across telling you to reconnect to the wi-fi uh, it'll display your Wi-Fi username and password. You can go ahead and save that, screenshot it, or send it to whoever you need to. And then hit connect. As you see at the very top, it now says fish and cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect. I'm gonna type in my password. Fish and cheese. I believe both words capitalized. All right, so now I'm connected. All right. So, so now that we have the first one connected to the internet, what you're gonna wanna do now is go ahead and plug in the other two devices. And right here on this screen, it's gonna basically teach you how to get everything connected, but just kind of ignore this and follow what I, I'm going on next. So go ahead and hit next. Go ahead and hit next. All right, now you wanna sit on this screen for just a second after you plug your devices in, make sure you stay on this screen for at least until the devices start blinking. Now, um, it usually takes about a minute after they've been plugged in to start blinking, but please wait until they both start blinking. Mine are now blinking. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna hit IC. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the X button to cancel out of that. As you can see, the primary node has been detected, and now the secondary nodes will have to be um, detected. Now, this is usually done automatically. As you can see, the second node has just connected. As they connect, they'll turn green. And now the third node is connected. So now all three nodes are connected.
to the prime. I mean, all two nodes are connected to the primary node and the device is good to go and set up. Now, all right, folks, now as you can see, all three of the lights are green. Good job. Um, so now your devices are connected. So let me walk you through some of the setup features. So if you want to do port forwarding or um, universal plug and play and things like that, where to find those settings and how to edit them. All right, folks, so now we're back in the app. What you want to do is go ahead and hit settings and settings is going to take you through everything you'll need for this device. So at the top is your wireless settings. This is going to be where your username or your Wi-Fi name and your password is stored. You can hit the share button in the corner to send it to someone or just change your information if you want to. Guest network, great feature in my opinion. Um, guest network allows you to create your username and password. It does have a default one, which I really suggest changing. But the cool thing about this is it has a validity period, which allows you to set it for eight hours, four hours, or always valid. Uh, this is a really great feature for those who have like a business that they run and have a lot of visitors or uh, a lot of family and friends that come over or even like an Airbnb that you're running. It's a great way to keep your network secure, but also allow uh, folks to use the network. Has parental controls as well. Go ahead and hit add group. I'm gonna do test for this example. I'm not gonna go ahead and go through all of the settings for this, but I'm gonna show you these first couple steps. Hit next. So here is where you add the device that's already connected to the Wi-Fi to a parental group. So you do have to have the device already connected, but then you can go ahead and select it from the list here and then hit okay and it'll add it to a parental group and then you will be able to set the parameters for that group. All right, so let's go ahead and go to internet settings. This is gonna be where in the very beginning of setup, you were able to select your internet connection type. So my connection type again is DHCP. It was done automatically. Most are done automatically and it's perfectly fine when you do it that way. For whatever reason, your connection is still not working. I suggest coming in here and playing around with which one, either one of these and seeing which one works. Bridge usually works for the most people besides DHCP. And that's usually because a lot of internet providers offer gateway routers and the gateway router or modem is basically a modem and a router in one. Um, a lot of those cannot be um, changed. So you have to piggyback it, which is called bridge. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. QoS, a quality of service. This is just to provide extra routing power or um, performance for other devices that are high demand like video gaming systems or if you have a a computer or anything that just requires a lot of bandwidth it'll prioritize that device over the others this is where you go to add an extra Nova device if you had um, another device you wanted to add fast roaming is a pretty cool feature um, I advise reading through what it all functions uh, what all it, it allows but fast roaming basically will allow your device to connect to another Nova device as you walk through your property. Um, and it's much quicker and much seamless than having fast roaming off. Um, it's, it's, I usually keep it off just so that I don't have any issues with devices that are a little bit older, but it's up to you. Capacity orientated mode. Basically this allows for more than 30 devices to be connected to your Nova Wi-Fi network at one time. You can cut this off if you know for a fact that you'll never have more than 30 devices connected, um, as most people do not. Smart Assist was a very cool feature that I saw um, and I was really excited about for, for this mesh system. And basically, if you ever used a ring camera or any kind of um, door camera or, or any kind of thing like that, they need to be on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. And if you cannot connect your um, your your phone to that 2.4 gigahertz band, you will not be able to use those those ring cameras at all. Um, with that being said, if you enable this, this will allow your phone to stay on the 2.4 gigahertz band. That means that if you use this phone to, like if you enable it and then use that same phone to set up your ring doorbell camera, it'd be a lot more seamless and, and frustration free. Here you have your port forwarding. Oh, it just disconnected really fast. Here you have your port forwarding. You can add a rule for port forwarding. Your universal plug and play. Your LAN settings. 
your DNS settings, and then the firmware upgrade. And you can see that the firmware for each device is current or um, each device is the same. You can click on detect latest firmware and figure out if there is a new update. There is not right now, I'm on the highest one. And then you can do a maintenance schedule. Now the maintenance schedule is pretty cool as well because it allows you to have your devices reboot automatically to keep them fresh and, um, and, and performing at their optimum um, without having to go in and unplug them uh, physically yourself. So it's a really great feature. You can set it on a schedule and it's pretty cool in my opinion, uh, but it's pretty standard for most routers. All right, so that goes over the settings. Um, if you have any questions, like, please leave a comment like. down below. Uh, let me know. Thank you.